Let's bring in Allison Bird. She is a seismologist with Natural Resources Canada. Allison, thanks for taking the time for CTV News today. Good to have you with us. Thank you. How common or not is a magnitude of that size for Taiwan when it comes to an earthquake? Well, it's actually quite common. Uh, they've had about uh, seven earthquakes of this size in the past 50 years. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a fairly routine event. Um, they are in a very tectonically active area, though. Yeah, we're going to show, if we can, uh, this uh, map we've put together of Taiwan and the tectonic plates here. So, uh, you know, what? just tell us a little bit about, you know, the area in terms of the seismic activity, uh, Allison. Well, the, this is located on that ring of fire that people tend to talk about, where around the edge of the Pacific Ocean, we've got intense tectonics and volcanic activity, um, and that results in a lot of seismic activity. Uh, there's, a, in this region, the uh, Philippine Sea Plate subducting underneath the Eurasian Plate. So it's an area where there's great compression, and you tend to have these, these major earthquakes um, along the subduction zone. And uh, this is one of them. It's actually not as large as um, subduction zone earthquakes can get. Uh, the largest was a 9.5, which is about 100 times the size of the one that occurred yesterday. But um, yes, this is this is definitely um, a damaging earthquake, as you noted. And because it was quite close to the coast, unlike uh, some, uh, most of them, these types of earthquakes would tend to be further offshore, because it was close to the coast, it was close to the populated centers, and, and that's why it did so much damage. Yeah, it's it's obviously nighttime right now in Taiwan. Uh, you know, the rescue mm -hmm. and recovery effort is ongoing. Uh, the fact that we are hearing of uh, nine people confirmed killed, I'm wondering what you make of that in, in terms of, you know, the impact that a 7.4 might have on an urban area like Huanlin City, uh, you know, and your thoughts on that, because... You know, obviously, Taiwan, the authorities there are well aware that they're in a tectonic area, seismic, a lot of seismic activity. And, you know, a lot of the buildings have been, you know, constructed to try and deal as best as you can with earthquakes, Allison. Yes, well, similar to here, there's a, a building code that takes into, into consideration these seismic needs. Um, unfortunately, what I'm seeing in terms of the damage is very typical. It's the older buildings, uh, older sort of masonry style buildings, and also buildings that have poor reinforcement. So, um, you know, in the earlier days of um, concrete buildings, uh, there was not uh, enough uh, reinforcement, metal reinforcement in the, in the concrete to, to help keep the buildings up. Uh, two of the main buildings that I saw damaged were where they had a soft story. So you have um, parking or shops on the ground floor, they were quite open, there's very little reinforcement on that ground floor, but the upper floors are stiffer and stronger and, and the, the lower four essentially pancakes and the, the building tilts. Mm. We have a, also a map that we're going to bring up, if we can, just of the region to give people a sense of where Hualien City is on the east coast, uh, south of uh, Taipei, the capital. Uh, the triggering of tsunami warnings as well, uh, you know, th is that, that normal? Is that common? How concerned should we be about that? Well, it's, it's very common when you have a mega thrust earthquake, anything in a subduction zone where you have um, essentially what can be movement of the ocean floor, um, because that what happens is the ocean floor shifts upward and the whole water column above it um, is shifted. And that's why tsunamis can be extremely powerful. There's a lot of mass in that region and, and that results in a lot of energy and momentum in the tsunami waves. However, because this one happened at the coastline, it was in an area that was fairly shallow water. So uh, the tsunami that, that resulted was very minor, uh, thankfully. So uh, it re really reduced the this potential for, for the ma major tsunami. And what about aftershocks? Oh, goodness, yes. You can expect a lot of them, unfortunately. Whenever you have a major earthquake um, like this, um, th the whole fault r doesn't rupture evenly. And the areas that have not yet fully released their strain will release strain. Um, and, and you'll have aftershocks um, probably hundreds, if not thousands, um, and they will go on for, for weeks, possibly even months or even years. Allison, appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us here on CTV. Let us tap into your expertise. Thank you very much. Allison Bird is a seismologist with Natural Resources.